Okay, we're going to take a look at the concept of kill switches with VEX programming. This topic comes up uh, once in a while. Usually, somebody wants to implement a button that causes the entire program to stop uh, when it's pressed, and there's usually a couple different ideas on how to do this. Um, the most commonly uh, quoted one usually deals with the use of conditionals, in particular uh, while statements or while loops. So I want to take a look at this because while loops can be tricky to implement as a kill switch. It's tricky because it depends a lot on the programming that's used. So what I've got here is just a simple program in which we're going to start a motor. We're going to wait to let the motor run, stop the motor. We're going to wait an additional second just to show the motor stopped. And I've set it up with the condition that the limit switch, which I've called lever, as you can see here, um, as long as that lever um, has not been pressed, it's going to go through this loop endlessly. And, and that's where that zero value is. As soon as I press the lever, if this works as a kill switch, it should shut off the motors and will kill the program. So we're going to take a look at uh, that video first. So you may have noticed watching the video and the uh, recording of the screen that during that test, if I hit the limit switch while I'm in the middle of this wait command here, nothing happened. The motors kept going. Nothing stopped. And this is due to the behavior of how conditionals work. So understand that in a conditional, whether it's a while loop or another kind of conditional statement, the condition, what we have here in the parentheses, is only checked at the start of each iteration. And the code that's between the brackets for the while loop is the iteration. So it's going to start the motor, wait 10 seconds, stop the motor, and then wait one second. And after that second, it checks to see if the sensor value has been um, is 1 or 0. It only checks it at that point. It doesn't check it continuously throughout the entire task, which means that if you have wait commands built into the task, it has to go through everything before it's going to check that condition. That's why sometimes you'll notice that you press the lever and nothing happens. It just keeps going. So now we're going to make a change just to demonstrate how this works. I'm going to change these three lines to comments and make it so that Instead of having to wait or stop the motor, the loop's just going to start the motor. What do you think is going to happen? Okay. If you predicted that it was going to stop the motor as soon as I press it, you're correct. But why? Why did it work this time? Well, the reason why is now the only command once that loop starts is start the motor. And that command happens in a split second. So it starts the motor and instantly checks to see if the condition is true. And it's rapidly going back and forth between start motor and checking the condition. That's why you may have noticed that the green bar kept bouncing back and forth because it is constantly starting a motor, check the condition, start the motor, check the condition. And because that is almost instantaneous, as soon as I press the switch, motor stopped. Well, we should probably say instead of motor stop, the program stopped. So if we take the wait commands out, it works. But let's say we need those wait commands in there. And then that be means that checking the sensor value isn't going to be a very efficient way to implement a true kill switch, a switch that just stops the entire program. So for that, we're going to go over and we're going to talk about multitasking. Now, multitasking is going to work a little differently. In a multitask, what's going to happen is we set everything up the same, 
But before the main task, we actually create a separate task. In this case, task kill switch. In that task, I'm going to use an until touch. I use until touch instead of until bump because bump requires me to actually release the button or the lever in order to finish the code. Until touch, as soon as it's been pressed in, it triggers. So notice we until touch for the lever, and then we finish it with stop all tasks, which means it's going to look for this task and this task and just stop them completely. I'm going to come to my task main, and the very first command I'm going to put in there is to start task kill switch. Now what this does is it means while the main task is running, the kill switch task is also running concurrently. What this effectively does is it creates a situation where the entire time it's going through this while loop, it is constantly waiting for that lever to be pressed. So let's see what happens. Okay, so as you saw, as soon as I press the lever, even while it was in the middle of this wait command, it stopped everything. It stopped everything because both tasks are running at the same time. And with this task running, as soon as I touch that lever, it stops both tasks, effectively creating its kill switch. So in review, implementing a kill switch using conditionals, such as a while loop, can be highly dependent on their code. Using wait commands impacts performance. Instead, we look at multitasking to create an effective kill switch and introduce an advanced programming concept to students. Thank you for watching.